The Book of Ezra is a book of the Hebrew Bible, which formerly included the Book of Nehemiah in a single book, commonly distinguished in scholarship as Ezra Nehemiah. The two became separated with the first printed rabbinic Bibles of the early 16th century, following late medieval Latin Christian tradition. Its subject is the return to Zion following the close of the Babylonian captivity, and it is divided into two parts, the first telling the story of the first return of exiles in the first year of Cyrus the Great 538 BC and the completion and dedication of the new temple in Jerusalem in the sixth year of Darius I 515 BC, the second telling of the subsequent mission of Ezra to Jerusalem and his struggle to purify the Jews from marriage with non-Jews. Together with the Book of Nehemiah, it represents the final chapter in the historical narrative of the Hebrew Bible. Ezra is written to fit a schematic pattern in which the God of Israel inspires a king of Persia to commission a leader from the Jewish community to carry out a mission. Three successive leaders carry out three such missions the first rebuilding the temple, the second purifying the Jewish community, and the third sealing the holy city itself behind a wall. This last mission, that of Nehemiah, is not part of the Book of Ezra. The theological program of the book explains explains the many problems its chronological structure presents. It probably appeared in its earliest version around 399 BC, and continued to be revised and edited for several centuries before being accepted as scriptural in the early Christian era. Summary the Book of Ezra consists of ten chapters, chapters 1–6, covering the period from the Cyrus the Great to the dedication of the Second Temple, are told in the third person, chapters 7–10, dealing with the mission of Ezra, are told largely in the first person. The book contains several documents presented as historical inclusions, written in Aramaic while the surrounding text is in Hebrew 1–2–4, Chapters 1–6 documents included in the text in italics 1. Decree of Cyrus, first version, Cyrus, inspired by God, returns the temple vessels to Sheshbazar, prince of Judah, and directs the Israelites to return to Jerusalem with him and rebuild the temple. 2. 42,360 exiles, with men servants, women servants and singing men and women, return from Babylon to Jerusalem and Judah under the leadership of Zerubbabel and Jeshua the high priest. 3. Jeshua the high priest and Zerubbabel build the altar and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. In the second year the foundations of the temple are laid and the dedication takes place with great rejoicing. 4. Letter of the Samaritans to Artaxerxes, and reply of Artaxerxes, the "'enemies of Judah and Benjamin' offer to help with the rebuilding, but are rebuffed, they then work to frustrate the builders, "'down to the reign of Darius." The officials of Samaria write to King Artaxerxes warning him that Jerusalem is being rebuilt, and the king orders the work to stop. Thus the work on the house of God in Jerusalem came to a standstill until the second year of the reign of Darius king of Persia." 5. Tatanai's letter to Darius, through the exhortations of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah, Zerubbabel and Joshua recommence the building of the temple. Tatanai, satrap over both Judah and Samaria, writes to Darius warning him that Jerusalem is being rebuilt and advising that the archives be searched to discover the decree of Cyrus. 6. Decree of Cyrus, second version, and decree of Darius. Darius finds the decree, directs Tatanai not to disturb the Jews in their work, and exempts them from tribute and supplies everything necessary for the offerings. The temple is finished in the month of Adar in the sixth year of Darius, and the Israelites assemble to celebrate its completion. Chapters 7 107. Letter of Artaxerxes to Ezra. Artaxerxes rescript. King Artaxerxes is moved by God to commission Ezra to inquire about Judah and Jerusalem with regard to the law of your God, and to appoint magistrates and judges to administer justice to all the people of Trans Euphrates, all who know the laws of your God. Artaxerxes gives Ezra much gold and directs all Persian officials to aid him. 8. Ezra gathers a large body of Ritternes and much gold and silver and precious vessels for the temple and camps by a canal outside Babylon. There he discovers he has no levites, and so sends messengers to gather some. The exiles then return to Jerusalem, where they distribute the gold and silver and offer sacrifices to God. 9. 
Ezra is informed that some of the Jews already in Jerusalem have married non-Jewish women. Ezra is appalled at this proof of sin, and prays to God, "'O God of Israel, you are righteous. We are left this day as a remnant. Here we are before you in our guilt, though because of it not one of us can stand in your presence." 10. Despite the opposition of some of their number, the Israelites assemble and send away their foreign wives and children. Historical background In the early 6th century BC, the Kingdom of Judah rebelled against the Neo-Babylonian Empire and was destroyed. As a result, the royal court, the priests, the prophets and scribes were taken into captivity in the city of Babylon. There a profound intellectual revolution took place, the exiles blaming their fate on disobedience to their God and looking forward to a future when he would allow a purified people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. The same period saw the rapid rise of Persia, previously an unimportant kingdom in present-day southern Iran, to a position of great power, and in 539 BC Cyrus II, the Persian ruler, conquered Babylon. It is difficult to describe the parties and politics of Judea in this period because of the lack of historical sources, but there seem to have been three important groups involved, the Ritternees from the exile who claimed the reconstruction with the support of Cyrus I, the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin, and a third group people of the land", who seem to be local opposition against the Ritternees building the temple in Jerusalem. The following table is a guide to major events in the region during the period covered by the Book of Ezra. Texts Ezra Nehemiah The single Hebrew book Ezra Nehemiah, with title, Ezra, was translated into Greek around the middle of the 2nd century BC. It was first proposed to be divided into separate books I Ezra and II Ezra by the early Christian scholar Origen in the 3rd century AD, and Jerome, writing in the early 5th century, noted that this division had since been adopted by Greek and Latin Christian commentators, although in all surviving Christian Greek and Old Latin manuscripts Ezra Nehemiah is one book denoted as Esdras Beta. Jerome himself rejected the division in his Vulgate translation of the Bible into Latin from the Hebrew, and consequently no early Vulgate manuscripts separate the two books, and they remained undivided as a single book in the 8th century Commentary of Bede, and in the 9th century Bibles of Alcuin and Theodulf of Orleans. However, from the 9th century onwards, Latin Bibles are found that reintroduce Origen's division, and this becomes standard in the Paris Bibles of the 13th century. It was not until 1516–17, in the first printed rabbinic Bible of Daniel Bomberg that the separation was introduced generally in Hebrew Bibles. First Esdras One Esdras, also known as, "'Esdras Alpha'", is an alternate Greek-language version of Ezra. This text has one additional section, the "'Tale of the Three Guardsmen' in the middle of Ezra chapter 4. Almost all early Christian references to the "'Book of Ezra' are citations of one Esdras not "'Ezra Nehemiah'", while the "'Ezra' portions of Ezra Nehemiah are never cited in patristic writings before the 6th century, and appear never to have been read in church. <laughs> Date, structure and composition Date Koresh of Ezra chapter 1 verse 1 is called, "...king of Persia", which title was introduced not by Cyrus the Great but by his grandson and probable namesake Xerxes 486–465 BC. Scholars are divided over the chronological sequence of the activities of Ezra and Nehemiah. Ezra chapter 7 verse 8 says that Ezra arrived in Jerusalem in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes, while Nehemiah chapter 2 verses 1 to 9 has Nehemiah arriving in Artaxerxes' twentieth year. If this was Artaxerxes I, 465 to 424 BC, then Ezra arrived in 458 and Nehemiah in 445 BC. 
Nehemiah chapters 8 to 9, in which the two, possibly by editorial error, appear together, supports this scenario. Topic: <laughs> Structure. Topic: The contents of Ezra Nehemiah are structured in a theological rather than chronological order. The temple must come first, then the purifying of the community, then the building of the outer walls of the city, and so finally all could reach a grand climax in the reading of the law." The narrative follows a repeating pattern in which the God of Israel "...stirs up." The king of Persia to commission a Jewish leader Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah to undertake a mission, the leader completes his mission in the face of opposition, and success is marked by a great assembly. The tasks of the three leaders are progressive, first the temple is restored Zerubbabel, then the community of Israel Ezra, and finally the walls which will separate the purified community and temple from the outside world Nehemiah. The pattern is completed with a final coda in which Nehemiah restores the belief of Yahweh. This concern with a schematic pattern making, rather than with history in the modern sense of a factual account of events in the order in which they occurred, explains the origin of the many problems which surround both Ezra and Nehemiah as historical sources. Topic composition Topic 20th century views on the composition of Ezra revolved around whether the author was Ezra himself and who may have also authored the books of Chronicles or was another author or authors who also wrote the Chronicles. More recently it has been increasingly recognized that Ezra, Nehemiah and Chronicles all have extremely complex histories stretching over many stages of editing, and most scholars now are cautious of assuming a unified composition with a single theology and point of view. As an indication of the many layers of editing which Ezra has undergone, one recent study finds that Ezra chapters 1 to 6 and Ezra chapters 9 to 10 were originally separate documents, that they were spliced together at a later stage by the authors of Ezra chapters 7 to 8, and that all have undergone extensive later editing. Topic Persian documents Topic 7 purported Persian decrees of kings or letters to and from high officials are quoted in Ezra. Their authenticity has been contentious, while some scholars accept them in their current form, most accept only part of them as genuine, while still others reject them entirely. L. L. Grab surveys six tests against which the documents can be measured comparative known Persian material, linguistic details, contents, presence of Jewish theology, the Persian attitude to local religions, and Persian letter writing formulas and concludes that all the documents are late post Persian works and probable forgeries, but that some features suggest a genuine Persian correspondence behind some of them. Topic see also topic Esdras topic references topic topic external links topic commentaries Blankensop, Joseph, Ezra Nehemiah, a commentary Eerdmans, 1988 Blankensop, Joseph, Judaism, the first phase Eerdmans, 2009 Coggins, R. J., the books of Ezra and Nehemiah Cambridge University Press, 1976 Ecker, Ronald L., Ezra and Nehemiah, Ecker's Biblical Web Pages, 2007 Fensham, F. Charles, The Books of Ezra and Nehemiah Eerdmans, 1982 Grab, L. L., Ezra Nehemiah Routledge, 1998 Grab, L. L., A History of the Jews and Judaism in the Second Temple Period, Volume 1 T. T. Clark, 2004 Pakala, Yuha, Ezra the Scribe, The Development of Ezra Chapters 7–10 and Nehemiah Chapter 8 Walter de Gruyter, 2004 Throntvate, Mark A., Ezra Nehemiah John Knox Press, 1992 Translation Sezra Judaica Press translation with Rashi's commentary at Habad. Org. Bible Gateway opens at Niv version. Ezra King James version. Bible Ezra public domain audiobook at LibriVox.